Hello, welcome to this session and if you remember in the previous session we were discussing about that how to incorporate green into the different loop of the supply chain starting from sourcing of raw material to the end disposal of the product. So, what we will do in this session, we will take the very, uh, uh, very popular and also one of the earliest attempt by this organization Walmart to green their supply chain and we will discuss this case study and also we will take few recent examples by few of the organization that how they have incorporated this green supply chain practices into their supply chain. So, this is based on Stanford case study on greening the Walmart by Erika Plambeck and Lynn Dennett. Now, to start with in 2005 Walmart CEO Lee Scott, he launched a sweeping business sustainability strategy to dramatically reduce the company impact on the global environment. And the goal behind is that to become the most competitive and innovative company in the world. And they committed the company into three ambitious goals to be supplied 100 percent by the renewable energy, to create zero waste and to sell product that sustain Walmart's resource and the environment. To meet those goals, Walmart would seek to transform its supply chain in cooperation with suppliers, environmental non-profit organization. Now, what they did to start with, they hire a consulting group to identify the category in their product and process which are having more environmental impact. So, this job of this consultative group is to help Walmart to find out those in those points in product and process where it is having the highest environmental impact. They identified 14 focal area and all this focal area bundle into three category renewable energy, zero waste and sustainable product. So, if you see in the, the picture which is in Walmart sustainable value network, you will find under this three category there are few focal area where the impacts are more which can be to move for this sustainability goal the, here the intervention require in this loops of this focal areas. Now, the, what they did? They created a sustainable value network structure where they found the leader of each focal area in term of executives, in term of the manager and the responsibility of this leaders are to build a sustainable value network structure that is incorporating or you, uh, taking Walmart employees and representative from government, academia, environmental non-profit, suppliers and other stakeholders. And what is the goal? The goal is to reduce the environmental impact and derive profit from the positive change. The first thing, so they take many steps to incorporate this environmental concern into their uh, into the this focal area. They take they took many steps and the one of the initial step what they did is to identify the goals, metrics and new technology. So, in 2008 Walmart formally planned to use a system to measure and recognize this entire supply chain based on each company's ability to use. So, they did into less packaging, utilize more effective material in packaging, source this material more efficiently relative to other sup uh, suppliers. The example is that they develop a web based scorecard for packaging and which will evaluate each product's packaging against the 9 sustainability metrics include QB utilization, recycle content, CO2 per ton of production and recovery value. And also the other example is that although they initially they plan that how much should be the increase in the efficiency each year, but in their logistic or in their trucking fleet, but they double the efficiency, the targeted the doubling the efficiency in next 10 year. So, mostly they are identifying the metrics where the changes are needed, the goals and also they are bringing the new technology in order to address the sustainability concern. Then the other step what they did is they certify the environmental sustainable product. So, there is an international study released in 2006 which says that all species of wild seafood are greatly depleted and predicted to collapse within 50 years. 
and at this point Walmart source ap approximately 750 million dollar seafood in 2006 and the company seafood business was growing at the rate of 25 percent per year. It means they are also contributing that to that wild seafood because they are sourcing it from there. So, what they did? They look at what are the certification available for this uh, seafood. So, Marine Steward Council MSC established by Unilever and World's Wildlife Fund in 1997 defined the standard of nat uh, certification as sustainable fishery. They certify the third party to audit and certify fishery and the processor complaints throughout the supply chain from boat to plate. So, here then the Walmart took that certification and also ensure that whatever the seafood they are sourcing that is only MSC certified fish not from any other certified. It means they are sourcing it from a source, sourcing it from a uh, uh, what to say agency where there is a the environmental impact is less and the impact is associated from boat to plate. Then the other step is that they provide the network partner assistance to the supplier. So, they provide the supplier with the valuable knowledge and process assistance through its strong relationship with environmental non-profit in its network. The typical example is taken over here is that when Chinese government threatened to shut down the number of textile dye houses including one of the Walmart supplier in order to reduce pollution in Beijing ahead of 2008 Olympics, Walmart immediately got into protecting their supplier. They put the dye house in touch with one of their NGO in their network and the NGO help them to formulate the most environmental friendly process that reduce the toxic output quickly and in that way the supplier could save themselves from shutdown and in that process Walmart played a role to connecting the supplier to the NGO and in turn that NGO helped them to how to reduce the environmental impact in their process. Then Walmart which become world's largest purchase of organic cotton in 2006 also agreed to purchase the organic cotton farmers alternate crops. Whatever the alternate crops they are doing uh, harvesting, they also agreed in order to support their livelihood, they also agreed to buy whatever the alternative crop that is being harvested by the uh, cotton farmer. Then they committed to large volume of environmental sustainable product. So, they made commitment to buy specified quantity of each product certified as environmental friendly also give it supplies and incentive to develop and produce the product. So, in a textile uh, network along with the cost of certification farmers they face a near term reduction in the yield with cot organic cotton farming as well as the need to diversify the crop. So, what the since there is a decrease in the yield and also they need to diversify the crop the farmers they get into the alternate farming of cotton with vegetables and other crops to rejuvenate the soil. So, here they say that this also we discussed in the previous slide that Walmart they only source the organic cotton and also in order to protect the livelihood of the farmer those who are into the organic cotton they also committed to buy the whatever the alternate crop they are harvesting. Then they cutting out the middlemen the what they did is that uh, in immediate but unanticipated benefit is MSC certification in seafood network or organic cotton certification textile network. The what they did is that they since they have taken a certificate uh, for both the seafood network and cotton and also in other cases they eliminate the intermediary and they simplify the supply chain, they reduce the frequency of seafood stock outs, improve the quality of the fish it was receiving, reduce paperwork and transaction cost and reduce the cost of environmental impact of the transportation. Then they consolidated the direct supply and restructuring the buyer's role. So, what they did is that since they were having many diverse relationship with the factory and they use often working in supplier one purchase order at a time or one season at a time. So, what they, they did? They in order to manage the relationship with their all the supplier in the textile network they did some organizational change and they redesigned the role of buyers and in, in the past textile buyers had been the generalist handling wide variety of responsible 
responsibility as the buyer did, did it in other product category, but they redesign the role of buyer, they redesign the role of supplier uh, to make the process more efficient. And what are the, re, how they restructure the buyer role? They put them into this different category started with merchandising, product development, technical services and sourcing, planning and execution and clearly identifying what is the role of in each of this. So, if someone is product development, their role is just to focus on the product design and looking at the trend execution like what customer liking or what kind of product they are buying. Similarly, there is a team which is working on planning on execution. So, typically they restructure buyer role rather than doing everything how each of them mostly the suppliers and buyers where they getting into this. Then they license the environmental innovation and this comes from the concern that typically the suppliers they are very sensitive about the IPR and they cons and uh, Walmart felt that this is creating a barrier for improving the environmental performance. The typical example can be over here is that if one factor is significant, one factor is significantly more energy efficient than others, then it got an advantage. But if they are telling that how they have become more energy efficient, if they are sharing the information with others, the competition might gain in a much better understanding of its production cost and therefore its profit margin. So, although there is a positive view about sharing this, but the supplier is sensitive about, about the IPR that whatever the practices they are following, how this can be given to the competitor. Now, what Walmart did, they encouraged the supplier to license their environmental innovation. And by doing this, this gives an opportunity to derive the additional revenue from the environmental innovation, increase the supplier incentive to invest in innovation. Licensing the innovation would lead to improve environmental performance across industry and more widespread benefit for the Walmart. Now, they have done all these things to green their supply chain. Here it is a very specific example what Walmart typically uh, practices in greening the supply chain for a child crib. So, here this is just an example that in building a child crib, a manufacturer must focus on every step of the process from the trees used to transport and ease of recycling. It starts with ethical sourcing, trees are tagged for tracing, logging practices protect community, air, water and wildlife habitat. So, it is sourced from ethical sourcing. Then the manufacturing parts are milled to the specification that are safe for worker, consumer and environment. Then point of cell information for consumer include place of origin chemical used in the manufacture, transport trucks use the cleanest technology reduce idling and travel the most direct route, there is a route optimization. Packaging crib assembled and packaged in box made from post consumer recycled material. Customer use it is friendly crib is easily assembled packaging is curbside and recyclable. Reuse crib is non disposable product rather it is passed to the family and friend and end of life when it is no longer useful as a crib recycle parts are, the recycle parts are recycled. So, if you look at for a child crib as a product starting from ethical sourcing it is going the green is being practiced in each stage till reuse and end of life. Now, after, uh, after going through the case study. Now, let us see there are for few examples for uh, two, three companies that how their practices what they are putting it in the supply chain that can be categ uh, categorized into the different attributes of the supply chain or bringing the green into the attributes of the supply chain. So, if you look at this is the case or example of Apple where sourcing Apple suppliers are committed to 100 percent renewable electricity for Apple production. And also they have an energy efficiency program educate supplier to identify new initiative in reduce energy usage and manage project. Similarly, product design they switch to the low carbon material, then they are building energy efficiency into product and also this tactic engine in iPhone 11 series is built from 100 percent recycled rare earth metal. 
then 16 inch MacBook Pro consumes 65 percent less energy than the Energy Star energy efficiency requirement. In this comes under the greening in product design and manufacturing. Similarly, in internal operation they use 100 percent renewable electricity uh, at Apple store, data center and office across 44 country and also in case of logistic and package they focus on prioritizing mode of transport with low carbon impact without compromising the delivery time, on time delivery and also they do a partnership with the shipping supply to leverage the fleet mode improvement, sustainable fuel and supply chain efficiency. Now this is the success of the green SCM strategy which is taken by Apple. It is recognized in for 6 consecutive years as CDP's climate change A list for their work in the carbon emission. Only returned to receive the top rating in mind the store campaign. Then they are the carbon neutral beginning in April 2020 Ap Apple is carbon neutral for all its corporate emission. Currently investing in high quality project that protect and restore forest, wetland and grassland and all final assembly site for their product has been certified as UL zero waste to landfill and they have reduced the plastic by 58 percent in last 4 years. Then let us see what is happening in Nestle. So Nestle responsible when it comes to sourcing they are their sourcing operation from farmer mostly connect so directly from the purchase of coffee, coca and milk. Then in product manufacturing they are the member of RE 2020 commitment for 100 percent electricity from the renewable sources, then optimizing energy consumption, then uh, 27 factory certified balance for water stewardship these are the greening initiative in product manufacturing and services. Similarly, they do in order to create awareness they do the training program for their employee and also they see that what is the sustainability can be brought into the design. Then in logistic and package they make 100 percent packaging which is recyclable or reusable, 87 percent of packaging is reusable till now and using recycled material for packaging in 2019 26% of the packaging used in Nestle operations content from the recycled material. And in August 2020 Nestle Philippines reached plastic neutrality. This is the progress so far they have implemented responsible sourcing for almost 80%, improve water efficiency by 35%, reduce plastic consumption by at least 140,000 tons from 2015 to 20 make 100 percent packaging material recyclable and reusable by 2025 and in coffee supply chain they target to improve quality quantity sustainability in its coffee supply chain by distributing 220 million coffee plant leads by 2020. And similarly for the percentage 65 percent have been already distributed and aim to achieve 77 percent zero deforestation with supply chain. These are few of the evidence on with respect to raw material sourcing from the responsible sources and also the water withdrawal. So in this session what we have tried to do is to understand the greening the supply chain from through the case study of Walmart and also the example of organization Apple and Nestle how they have brought the sustainability agenda or how they have brought the greening action or greening intervention in their supply chain and also what is the performance it has improved because of greening the supply chain. Thank you.